Mysterious zombie virus outbreak on campus, the infected surged towards the survivors like a tide, and the question remained, how could they escape? This story unfolds in a high school called Hyosan in South Korea on a regular rainy night. But what happens on the school rooftop is far from ordinary. Jin Su was being bullied by his classmates, evident from the scars on his wrists that bear witness to the pain he endures. He has considered transferring to end this hellish life, but the bullies won't allow it. At that moment, Jin Su, who was being stepped on the ground, suddenly had blue veins popping on his face. He pushed away his classmate and stood up. Fueled by desperation, Jin Su fought back and charged at his tormentor, only to be dodged and pushed off the rooftop. The classmates on the rooftop watched the fallen Jin Su with indifference. He was soon rushed to the hospital, and the doctors were trying to reach his father, Bayan Chan. Frantically, sneaking into the hospital room, Bayan Chan appeared oddly composed as he saw his heavily injured son lying on the bed. He tried to comfort Jin Su, telling him that things would get better, but these words pierced Jin Su's heart deeply. Then Jin Su plans to go out and fight the bullies. Bayan Chan held his son down and told him not to do anything stupid, but not long after, Jin Su's body began to change. prompting Bayan Chan to grab a Bible and strike him in an attempt to prevent Jin Su from harming others. After Jin Su doesn't move a muscle, Byung Chan sneaks him into a box, intending to take him away before figuring out what to do next. Bayan Chan fell down on the way and Jin Su's arm was exposed in the suitcase. He tried to put his arm back in the suitcase but was grabbed by a hand. No doubt Jin Su came back. The next day, Hyosan High School seemed peaceful as usual students practiced archery, sang songs, and Haiyan Ju, a female student, woke up in the science classroom, curious about the noises from the laboratory. She stumbled upon a cute little white mouse in a box. When she reached out to touch it, the mouse bit her. Feeling ominous, Haiyan Ju attempted to leave but was blocked by Bayan Chan, the school's science teacher. He noticed the bite on her hand and pulled her back into the laboratory. There have been some bad rumors at school in the last few days. The science teacher didn't come to class for a few days because his son had disappeared. And when he came back, he smelled bad, like a rotting corpse. <laughs> And he became very strange. Sometimes he suddenly ran out of the room in the middle of a lesson. This has never happened before. During the night, security guards patrolled the school. <sighs> Unaware that Haiyanju was trapped in the laboratory, the next day, when English teacher Sun Wan noticed Haiyanju's absence, she inquired if anyone had seen her recently. A classmate mentioned seeing her last in the science classroom. After class, Sun Wan went to the science classroom, where she found Bayan Chan coming out of the laboratory. She asked him if he had seen Haiyanju, to which he casually replied that he hadn't. Suddenly, there was a noise from the laboratory, and Bayan Chan hastily explained that it was just the sound of experimental white mice. After Sun Wan leaves, Bayan Chan returns to the lab, where Haiyan Ju is still being held captive, and she's not in the best of shape. However, her condition was deteriorating, as the medication he had administered could only delay the infection but not cure it. Haiyan Ju kept crying out for help, though her voice was weak, expressing her strong desire to survive. But Bayan Chan showed no emotion as he coldly told Haiyan Ju not to cling to hope for life. Shortly afterward, Bayan Chan went to attend his class. In the laboratory, Haiyanju's mutation worsened, and she managed to break free from her restraints. In a disoriented state, she stumbled back into the classroom, terrifying her classmates with her appearance. Sun Wan braced Haiyanju and asked her what happened. Haiyanju weakly revealed that Bayan Chan had imprisoned her in the laboratory. Su Hayak immediately carried Haiyanju to the school clinic, and classmates Anjo and Isaac rushed to help. 
The school doctor took Hai and Ju's temperature and found it was only 29.7 degrees, so he called an ambulance. But strangely, Hyun Ju keeps complaining that she feels hot even though her body temperature is low. <laughs> she even starts biting around and Anjo accidentally gets hurt. But at this point, Hai and Ju hasn't completely lost her mind. She remembers that Byun Chan gave her an injection. Isaac returned to the classroom where everyone was curious about the situation. She didn't hide anything and explained the conditions at the school clinic, mentioning that both Hai and Ju and Byun Chan emitted a foul smell. Upon hearing that An Zhou was injured, Chang San immediately rushed to the school clinic, only to find it empty. Hai and Ju had already been taken away in an ambulance. An Zhou's father, who was an ambulance worker, treated An Zhou's wound and advised her to be safe before leaving for the hospital. Sunwa told An Zhou and Su Hayak not to disclose Hai and Ju's situation for the time being. On their way back to the classroom, An Zhou suddenly confessed his feelings to Su Hayak, but Su Hayak politely rejected her. Su Hayak knew that Chang San had feelings for An Zhou. As they were close friends, Chang San arrived, and An Zhou, feeling dejected, left. Chang San asked Su Hayak about An Zhou's injury, and Su Hayak reassured him that it wasn't serious. Hai and Ju didn't bite An Zhou. She got injured while trying to evade the attack. Meanwhile, Bai An Chan returned to the laboratory and discovered that Hai and Ju was missing. Sun Hua then arrived at the lab and said Hai and Ju had been taken to the hospital. This news alarmed Bai An Chan and he urgently urged them not to take Hai and Ju to the hospital. He stressed the importance of isolating her immediately to prevent a major disaster, but nobody believed him. Bai Yang Chan was taken to the principal's office, but the principal also refused to listen to his explanations. Sun Hua had already called the police. As Bai Yang Chan was about to leave, the police arrived. The officer, Che Ik, was familiar with him. Meanwhile, the school nurse returned to her office, preparing to clean up. When suddenly her arms started hurting, she had been bitten by Hyunju while administering the injection. The virus spread rapidly, and her eyes turned red. The nurse's body temperature dropped to 31.5 degrees Celsius, and her nose started bleeding. At that moment, the bell rang for the end of class, and students went to the cafeteria for lunch. However, the nurse, now infected, was lying on the floor, convulsing. Two students noticed her strange behavior and started filming her with their phones. In the next second, the infected nurse turned like a rabid dog and rushed towards them. The male student was taken aback but felt more amused and it wasn't until the school nurse bit one of them that he realized it wasn't a joke. The bitten student quickly mutated and attacked others in another classroom. Simultaneously, the rooftop witnessed a different scene. Eun Ji was humiliated after GWI Nam bullied her and took inappropriate videos. Feeling utterly hopeless, she contemplated suicide. At this critical moment, a male student tried to persuade Eun Ji, promising to make GWI Nam delete the videos. Although she sensed the boy's affection for her, Eun Ji couldn't stand being with someone associated with GWI Nam's bullying. She requested the boy to stay away from her even after her death hoping not to meet him again in her next life. Just as Eun Ji turned to jump, someone else jumped ahead of her. They were stunned by the scene before them. The spread of the zombie-like plague rapidly engulfed the entire campus, and almost no one survived the places it reached. Sun Hua is about to go up to his classmate to reprimand him, and frightened by the student's appearance, Sun Hua rushes to run away desperately. The disaster came too quickly, leaving no time for preparation. In a flash, the canteen was in complete chaos. Chang San managed to protect An Zhou, and they narrowly escaped through a window. However, outside was no better, with zombies all around. Running would only lead to a quicker death, so the wisest decision was to hide. Chong San, An Zhou, and their classmates returned to the classroom, where a few other students had sought refuge. Immediately after Daesu came to take refuge, Suhayak and Namare also climbed in through the window. 
Bai Yangchan is responsible for how things have turned out. Bai Yangchan has a PhD in cytology. After returning from his studies, he worked as a researcher at a pharmaceutical company, and then quit to become a high school science teacher instead of a professor at a university. Bai Yangchan had been conducting a secret experiment, where he placed cats and mice in the same cage. While most mice cowered in the corner, some would lose their sanity due to extreme fear and ultimately rebel in anger. This led to a significant increase in ketone secretion. Bai Yangchan extracted these hormones, hoping to save mice suffering from trembling due to fear. His own son became his first experimental subject. Unfortunately, things didn't go as planned, and his son turned into a monstrous creature, attacking even his mother. Simultaneously, Hai and Ju, who had been taken to the hospital for examination, suddenly regained consciousness, her body folding in a bizarre way. <laughs> Hai and Ju began biting anyone she saw, and the virus quickly spread through the hospital. Meanwhile, the archery team returned from a competition, only to be shocked by the scene on campus. The students hiding in the classroom found a cell phone but couldn't unlock it without the password. The phone's owner was outside, and Chan San tried facial recognition to unlock it, to no avail. Anjo tells Chan San to call the police directly, and to make an emergency call without unlocking the phone soon. The call went through, but when the officer on the other end heard about zombies roaming on campus, they immediately dismissed Chong San as crazy. Soon after, the hospital also called to report zombie sightings, and only then did the police start taking it seriously. Subsequently, one call after another reported zombies at various locations, afraid that the police might consider Chong San's report a prank. Anjo made another call, claiming that there was a fire at the school. However, after waiting for some time, no police officers appeared, and even the emergency line couldn't be reached. The student's mentality gradually collapsed. At that moment, a teacher rushed in and instructed everyone to barricade the door with tables. Isaac realized that the teacher had been bitten, and tensions rose. The teacher quickly explained that it wasn't a bite, but it was a bite mark. Bravely, Isaac stood up and urged the teacher to leave the classroom. As soon as Isaac said that, the teacher's nose started to bleed, and he fell to the floor and started to convulse. <laughs> A few moments later, the teacher bites a female student. Everyone quickly joined forces to deal with the teacher. However, at this moment, the bitten female classmate also started to mutate. 